Hey, hey, God bless everyone. Sammy D here on Show Road, my favorite place in Brooklyn. This is the moment where I'm getting away from everything and just walking and talking uh -huh, with Jesus, my favorite time and moment of the day just to get away with the Lord. I walked like two miles. I got another few miles to go. I'm just trying to stay, maintain and contain and stay in shape. But listen to me, I'm having a beautiful time sharing Jesus with others. And I came across this one verse in my Bible. I love this Bible. Mary D gave me this Bible for my birthday. And I carry it with me, I drive around with it. It's the soul of the spirit. And it's easy to carry. And I love it. You've heard of the mark of Zorro with a Z, Z, O, R, O. The mark of Zorro from Hollywood. You've heard of him. Well, I have my Bible, and I call it the Bark of Sorrow. Watch this. Bark of Sorrow. S-O-R-R-O-W. Sorrow, like in sorry. I feel sorry for the devil, and he goes through sorrow when a child of God walks in the word of the Lord and carries it like a sore. You love the word, you learn the word, and you live the word. He is terrified, and he trembles and shakes in his boots. So I call it the bark of sorrow. Why bark, Sammy D? Well, you know, when you hear a dog that is scared, they start barking. Ow, 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 ow. And that's what he does. When you hit him with the word, ow, 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 the bark of sorrow. I feel sorry for you, Satan. Because greater is he that's in me and in you than he that is in the world. You realize you follow my concept? Okay, let's get with it. I read Psalm 3, verse 3. That's what I want to bring to you. That's an easy one to remember. Psalm 3, 3. Listen to what it says. Quickly. David is speaking. But you. Talking about the Lord. Oh Lord, are a shield surrounding me. Anywhere I turn, his shield surrounds me. Shield speaks of protection surrounding you. You, oh Lord, are a shield surrounding me. Listen to this. My glory. My glory, the one who lifts up my head on high. Oh man, that's powerful. The one that lifts up my head on high. Let me break this down to you. First of all, when he says, but, that means that there's a continuation or connection to an event before he got his butt in there. No point intended. Who watch this. If you go to verse one, you realize he starts by saying, Lord, how many are my foes, my enemies? How many are they? Listen to this. How many rise up against me? David had people against him. His enemies, his foes that wanted to destroy him. And he goes on to say, many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. Now that's a terrible thing to say. That's a terrible situation to be in. When you feel that many are against you, they want to destroy you and they say God will not deliver him. First of all, they're lying. Secondly, they're assassinating your character and they're distorting and trying to destroy your reputation and your testimony. Now you might have done some things, but God heals, he clears, and he cleans, and he delivers. You don't believe me? You know when David sinned with Bathsheba, had a husband killed to take this woman, and the prophet Nathan came to David and said, you know, you are that man. And David humbled himself and he cried out to God. God delivered him, he restored him, and then later on he says, he's a, a, a man after my own heart. 
So when they tried to bamboozle them, to lampoon and to assassinate your character, you have enemies that have come against you from everywhere. And that's what King David experienced. Enemies coming after him, verbally, attacking him physically. In fact, in one of the Psalms, Psalm 23, the psalmist said that God prepares a table for him where? Not in Hollywood, not up in the mountaintop, not in Hawaii, not under a palm tree, but in the midst of his enemies. Can you imagine God preparing a table for you? And he tells you, go into this restaurant where you know that there's people that are out to get you and God has prepared this table for you. Hallelujah. Hey guys, I'm over here preaching. I go on YouTube and Facebook. I'm just talking about Jesus. You guys know the Lord? Yeah. You do? That's great. <laughs> You're on oh, video yeah. now. Yeah. How did we get up here? What's going on? Isn't now? this a beautiful couple? <laughs> well, it's our 10 year anniversary. Is it? It's our 10 year anniversary. You've been married 10 years? 10 years. We have three kids. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, you guys look so young. Uh, yeah, I'm preaching on Psalm, Psalm 3. No, well, I'm, I'm, that's part of it, but Psalm 3, verse 3, where it says that God is a deliverer, a shield. David was running from King Saul, and he says, Lord, you are my deliverer. You're my shield. You're my protector. And I want to pray for you guys that you Please have another do, 10 years and more. <laughs> 10 years. I know, they've been married 10 years. They look like they're 15 years old. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. I don't feel like that. We've been through it, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 You want to talk about it? Oh, Just yeah. go ahead and share. Briefly. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. We're, we're in the wilderness right now. Okay. You know? Okay. But we feel like God has us in this wilderness okay. place because it's, a, it's the next... It's the next phase of our journey. Level, right? Yeah, we have to walk through it. Right, right. You have right. to walk through the wilderness, right. Right, or else right. you're gonna just play. You're right. gonna play religion. Right, exactly. You don't want that. You know, in the Bible, there are three or four levels, and spiritually, that's the desert. The desert is where God gets a hold of you alone. He told in the Book of Hosea, He says, "I will allure you to the desert," and that's where God gets you, gets a hold of you, and speaks to you. Then there's the wilderness. Remember when Jesus was tempted? He went into the wilderness, be tempted of the devil. That's where you fight your battles. You're in the wilderness now, there's a battle going spiritually. And then there's the uh, valley, and then there's the mountaintop. You're going through the wilderness. The wilderness, it's a battle, feel, but God fights your battle. You remember the book of, I believe it was in Kings, when Jehoshaphat was going to a battle, and one of the prophets got up and says, the battle is not yours battle is the Lord. Right. God's going to fight your battle Please. and he never loses. So while you're in the wilderness, this is how you fight. You heard of that, uh, that movie, uh, The War Room? Yeah, but I haven't seen it. Okay, so if you get to see it, it's beautiful. Get into your war room. That's your battlefield. And you fight the battle. God's called you to fight. What's your name? Sal. Sal. S-A-L. Alicia. Alicia. I'm going to pray for you guys. God delivered me 41 years ago from addiction to heroin, alcohol, mm -hmm. and then and out of prison as well. I'm 67 years old. Well, you look much younger. It, well, thank That's you. That's what he does. Yeah, yeah he, <laughs> he does, renews yeah, your, right? your youth. And so he delivered me, and he put me back where I was, in prisons to preach the gospel. I had a prison ministry for 35 years, and I do evangelism in the streets. And God has delivered me from much. I, I'm just filled with the Spirit of the Lord. I can tell. I feel with the Spirit of God. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this beautiful couple here. Alicia, right? And Saul. Ten year anniversary. <laughs> being married. How many are believing God for another ten years? <laughs> Not only with health and wealth. And whatever he's going through in the wilderness, Lord, I go through it with him in prayer. <laughs> God, give him victory. <laughs> Give him the victory to overcome whatever it is, Lord. Whatever he's facing, you know it. I don't need to know it, but give him the victory over it, Lord, that he arises above his circumstances. And I want you folks that are listening to me to pray for this couple. Keep them, keep them in prayer, Lord. And lift them up in prayer that they may have victory over anything and everything. I pray for prosperity. I pray for his health, his wealth. 
my God, whatever he's challenging now, any vices, any addictions, I break them in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that you give him a fresh start, a new heart, a heart that will raise up to praise and worship, lift up his hands, Lord, to let him walk as a priest that you put him in the house, <laughs> as a leader to his wife and his children, Lord, bless them, Lord, in Jesus' name, <laughs> amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Praise stop. God. Oh, I'm Hallelujah. so glad we stopped. Yeah, right. that was good. He said, this is it. We got to yeah. stop and listen to this. And story. you know something? When you were walking by, I said, you know, I, I don't want to offend anybody, so I'm going to stop this video and let, let them go by. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to continue going. Let them hear it. Maybe something will clink. And you guys. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I yeah. think yeah. I have one thing to share. Someone's yes. out there that I need to tell this to. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We've been in the wilderness, but there's one thing that I could have never anticipated, and I've always lived this thing, when God provides. You know, he didn't let the Israelites, their shoes didn't wear out. They had manna every day, right? Yeah. We're, li we're, we're literally yeah, living, we're living that living for that. two yeah. years. Right. Really good. For two and years, God, manna, people showing up yes, at our door. Blessing you. Yes. yes. I could right. never have imagined, and there's something about having faith that God really is pleased about. Good. So this is something that's just at the core of who he is and what pleases his heart. And like, we don't realize that. Like, it might be stressful for us to have to have this level of faith, but for some reason, God just adores it. When we can say, you know what? He will provide <laughs> for every single one of our needs. And Amen. I don't care what amount you're believing for, yeah. God actually will bring that amount to you every month without you knowing how, when, where, or why it's gonna happen. Okay. And I can tell you that from living proof almost two years of us having not one dollar of income, my husband almost on his deathbed. Okay, okay. Right. Three kids. We lifted him up. He has provided for us. My kids have never worn out their shoes. They still have food. We will run out of food. It's like that one last little bit that we have and then all of a sudden okay. someone else donates another CSA box or something okay. crazy to us. So right. just Listen. know that whatever you need, God has it. Okay. Now, uh, Sal. Get a little closer. So, you didn't know your wife is a preacher, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I know. Oh, yeah. Right, let me go further now. She's also had the gift of being a prophetess. Yes, she is. Being, don't, say, don't shake your head no now. Don't say no. You have that gift of being a prophetess. And, Sal, let me tell you something. I see in both you guys, whatever you're going through or been going through, that's going to be your, your mess is your message. Your trials is your triumph. God's going to use you guys to reach people that are in your situation. I don't know what church you go to. I don't need to know. But if you're not going to a church, find a good Bible-believing, preaching church. I can recommend the uh, World's Harvest Center. World's Harvest Community Center. Pastor Luke and his wife, Yvette, they're right on 64th and 7th Avenue. I went there for over 35 years, going to a church in Jersey now. That's a good church. If you need a church, the World's Harvest Community Center. You may want to look it up. If not that one, find a good church because God's going to lift you guys up. You're going to be a tremendous witness, preaching, prophesying to people. And the ministry is going to bring revenue. It's going to bring you closer to God and closer to people. You need to believe that. I believe it for you. But you got to get plugged in so that God can continue the work. Remember, he says in Philippians, he that started the good work with what? Will okay. perform it, will complete it. He's going to finish that work in your life regardless of what you're going through. What you're doing is not who you are. Who you are is a child of God, and God has great things for you. But get into a good Bible church, sit, listen, get taught, and then God's going to lift you up right there. And you're going to go places, man, with your wife and your children with tremendous. <laughs> Father, I, I declare this word to be true. I claim and proclaim this testimony that this couple, this young lady here is a prophetess for the Lord and they have gifts and talents inside of them that you're going to de 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 develop. The Bible says in Proverbs that your gift will make a way for you. My God, develop those gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray. Amen. 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 This is Thank worth you. it. I got to start my video all over again. <laughs> I know. Sorry. But it's been worth it, man. It was awesome. It's Thank you. It's been worth it, man. That was awesome. We can have church all day. Yeah. We really needed that. You guys my are, God. you bless me. You bless Thank me. You bless me. Bless you. I, I got my car there. I'm going to leave it there. And I'm going to. you in Jersey too, you know. You, yeah. I go to the Kings of Kings. Nice. Beautiful church. And I'm going to fly home, leave my car. And also, I'm, I'm on YouTube. This is my house. Hello? If you ever want to go, Samuel. What's your name? Samuel? Duenio. Dueño or, or Sammy D, you'll find me there. Find God bless you guys, man. Blessings. My Thank brother. You.
tremendous testimony of the love of God. I may not have time to finish my video, but listen, that's what the Bible says. Now, there were enemies that were coming against David. They wanted to destroy him. But then he says in verse 3, Lord, you are, you are my shield. You surround me like a shield and you lift up my head. You've heard of those commercials, right? It says, Bounty, the quicker picker up. Well, I want to entitle this message, Jesus, the quicker picker up. Jesus, the quicker picker up. And three things quickly that he's going to pick you up. First of all, he's going to pick up your head. David says, you're the lifter of my head. You know, when you bow your head, that's a sign of shame. You ever see those criminals, they get caught on the news and they have their head down. It's a sign of shame. It's a sign of guilt. You know, when a little child does something and you score them, they put their head down. It's a sign of feeling guilty. Bringing down your head is a sign of defeat. You know, when you're running a race or you lose or even a basketball game, or something, you put your head down like we lost. God's going to lift up your head. Jesus is the quicker picker up. The first thing he does is lift up your head. When you lift up your head, it's a sign of not pride or arrogance. It's a sign of confidence. I'm walking in the confidence of the Lord. I'm walking in the promises of God. I'm walking in what God has said that he will do and who he called me to be. So I'm walking in assurance and in confidence because Jesus is the quicker picker up. He'll pick up your head. Don't walk around with your head down. Pick it up, man. Don't matter how much money you got. You can be more broke than the Ten Commandments no matter what people are saying about you I heard somewhere it says when people are talking about you you know birds they peek or they peck at the favorite fruit that means you're favored and you've got something. That's why people talking about you and trying to assassinate your character. But pick up your head, man, and walk like I got this. I'm walking with the king. I'm a child of the king. So he picks up your head. The second thing he picks up is your hands. Picking up your hands is a sign of surrender. You know, when the cops, they address or arrest a criminal, the first thing they say, pick your hands up. Put your hands up. It's a sign of surrender. You surrender to God. Also, lifting up your hands is a sign of praise and worship. I was praising the Lord by the water. I had my hands lifted up. There was a lady came by and says, I see your hands lifted up. I don't think it's exercise. You praising the Lord, right? I said, yes, I'm lifting up the name of Jesus. You know, when Moses was in battle with the Amorite and he had his hands lifted up, the children of Israel, they advanced. When his hands got tired and they fell down, the Amorites advanced. Then two men came and they lifted up his hands and when they put it under a rock his hands stayed lifted up firmly and the Israelites advanced. I'm here to tell you, lift up your hands and praise. Lift up your hands to the Lord. Don't let them be weary. Don't let them be feeble. Lift up your hands and praise and surrender to God. My friend, the Bible says that God is sitting up on high. When you lift up your hand you're touching God's throne you go into the storehouse and whatever you need you stir it up and you bring it down so I'm here to tell you stir up the heavens before it happens here on earth it happens in heaven so stir up what's up there for you you need power stir it up you need joy stir it up you need deliverance stir it up you need prosperity stir it up you need healing stir it up up in heaven I know that we have that already through Christ but you got to get into the presence of God and by faith stir it up and bring it down that's why the Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violent and the violent they take it by force so get in there and by force stir up your blessing your abundant prosperity and all that you need stir it up in the Lord and bring it down into your life lift up your hands and then the third one is not just lift up your head. He lifts up your hands. He lifts up your health. Ah, some of you folks have been afflicted with all kinds of disease. Things we brought upon ourselves and things the devil threw at us. But God wishes that your soul prosper just like your health. He wants to bless you. He wants to give you divine health. Eat right, live right, sleep right. Drink plenty of water and do the things that you're able to do. In the meantime, leave the soup 
supernatural things to God. The anointing breaks yokes and brings healing. And by his stripes, we've been healed. So God wants to lift up your head. Don't be ashamed or guilty. Lift up your head and confident. I'm here to serve the Lord. Praise God. Then lift up your hands and praise and in surrender. And he lifts up your health. He touches me. Wop. And he brings divine help. Father, in Jesus' name, I send a word. I pray for that couple. I pray for 10th year anniversary. Bless them with health. Bless them, Lord, with your presence. And anyone that is listening to me right now, the mark and the bark of sorrow to the devil to flee and get out of the way. The power of God is coming into the house. The presence of God, the passion, and the person of the Holy Spirit bring freedom and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Ah! Ah! Amen and amen. Mm, mm, mm. God bless you. Stay well. Like I always say, stay blessed and fabulous.